Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Spectrum. We are glad that you joined us today. And Easter's coming, isn't it? And do you know what that means? Yes, it does mean chocolate, but it also means our Spectrum Easter breakfast. And even if you don't attend Spectrum in person on Sunday mornings, you can still come to our breakfast. So you email me and I can give you lots more information. Well, today we're gonna sing some songs and you see if you can see faith today as we sing. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spectrum. Why don't you stand up on your feet and we'll sing some songs. Surrounded, surrounded Your love is everywhere and I'm surrounded It's got me singing, hey Got me shouting, oh Show the world is the only way 
stars in the sky to show God's promises are true. The rainbows in the sky to show the world is the only way. The rainbows in the sky to show God's promises are true. The rainbows in the sky to show the world is the only way. The rainbows in the sky to show God's promises are true. The rainbows in the sky to show the world is the only way for your every day. He's the only way. Oh, that is just fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us together as we praise Him, as we worship the Lord. And just remember that you remember that He really is the only way. God is the only way. And so uh, let's go upstairs and let's hear the message. So do you have your Bibles ready? Because we need those today for our lesson and also your highlighter because it's really good to highlight some stuff. Well, the last few weeks, we've been learning all about the Old Testament and all the books of the Old Testament, haven't we? And we got them all memorized. That is amazing. Well, today we're going to do something just a little bit different. And then we'll get back to the New Testament soon. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the New Testament. But today we're going to talk about baptism. But before we do that, I have a special message from somebody that I want you to watch. You watch this. Hey Spectrum Kids, it's Teacher Kate. I just wanted to say a quick hello to everyone, especially to the grade ones, because I haven't seen you guys since Christmas. Can you believe that? There's actually someone here with me today that would also like to say hello. This is Baby Ewan, and he is the newest member of my family. He was born the end of February, and he's only a few weeks old. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> Ewan was born on a Saturday, and you know what? The next morning was Sunday, and he was already watching Spectrum Kids online, and we hadn't even left the hospital yet. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It will be a little while before Ewan can join us in the gym on a Sunday morning, but until then, you can find us hanging out at the nursery. So if you've been wondering what I've been up to in the last little while, I've been kind of busy with my new baby, but I miss you guys and I hope to see you soon. So until then, God bless. I'm thinking about you and I'm praying for you. Take care guys. Bye. Wasn't that awesome seeing the Chaws? We really miss Kate, don't we, in Spectrum? But she'll be back soon, don't worry. Well, I want you to take your Bible this morning and I want you to go to the book of Acts. So we go to the New Testament, and you know where the Old Testament ends at Malachi, doesn't it? So then we're going to start with the New Testament, and we're going to find Matthew, and we're going to go Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. And I want you to turn to Acts chapter 2. So that's easy to find. That's at the beginning in verse 38. Acts 2, 38. And this is what it says. Did you find it, everybody? Acts 2, verse 38. It says, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now there's another version that I want to read to you of that same verse and it says, all of you must turn away from sin, believe in Jesus and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So like I said, today we're going to talk about baptism. Now some churches baptize babies just like little baby you and who we just saw. But our church believes that we baptize kids and adults instead, and we dedicate babies, which is something a little bit different. Now, I was actually both. I was baptized as a baby because we went to a different church that believed in baptizing babies. And so what they did is they sprinkled water over my head. But then when I came to know Jesus, and he became my best friend, and then when I started coming to this church, I realized that really I should get baptized after I believe. So I got baptized again here as an adult, and I'm going to show you some pictures in a little while of where I went down into the tank and got baptized here. So this verse in Acts talks about uh, repenting. Now, what does repent mean? Hmm, repent's pretty easy. It just means that you turn from your sins. It just means that you realize, uh-oh, I'm doing something wrong, and then you turn around and you go the other way and do what's right. So it's turning from the bad things that you're doing 
to turning to following Jesus. So let's pretend I'm going to go this way. So I'm walking down the road and I'm doing some bad things and Jesus is back there. And all of a sudden, through the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, Julia, Julia, come and follow me. Turn away from the bad things you're doing. Repent. And I'm like, who's calling me? And I turn around and I realize, it's Jesus. I think I want to follow him. And then I say, Jesus, I'm sorry for those bad things that I've done. I want to follow you. And then I start going that way and I follow Jesus. So that's repent. It means to turn away from the bad things that you're doing and to follow after Jesus. So here's the question I have for you. Could baby Ewan do that? Can babies do that? Can they think, hmm, I don't want to do bad things anymore. I want to follow Jesus. Not really, can they? They can't really decide that yet until they're older. And so that's why, like I said, we dedicate babies in our church, but we baptize people when they're older. So baptism is for kids and for adults who decide that they want to follow Jesus um, through the waters of baptism after that they've asked Jesus into their heart. So getting baptized, a good way to think of it is kind of like an announcement. After you've decided that you want to follow Jesus, you want to tell everybody, you want to make an announcement. When my kids were born, I'll use Anna, who's my youngest. When Anna was born, people still used to put announcements in the newspaper. I know not too many people these days look at the newspaper, but back then they did. Look how small it was. It was just a little announcement. I actually have to put glasses on to read it. But it says, Rick and Julia Benwell are pleased to announce the birth of Anna Faith Benwell, born Saturday, May the 15th, 2004, at the IWK Health Center, weighing eight pounds, eight ounces. She is a little sister to Mark Andrew and Christopher. Proud, gr proud grandparents are Les and Jean Seymour and George and Amy Benwell. Special thanks to the doctor, whatever. So that's a little announcement, announcing Anna's birth. And so baptism is kind of like an announcement. I found this one too. Some of you, some of your parents might remember this. This was a bulletin that the church used to put out every week and it has in it all the things that the church did. It's really cool actually. Talk, it has all the pastors written here on the back. It's got all the different things that we did. And on this one part, it's called department news. In the middle, it's got more announcements. And up here in the corner, it says, oh, congratulations. Anna Faith, eight pounds, eight ounces, was born on May the 15th to Rick and Pastor Julia Benwell, the proud grandparents. Anyway, it talks about the new arrival. So that's another announcement. So we had lots of announcements about Anna Faith being born. But like I said, baptism is like an announcement. What we want to do is we want to tell people the good news of what's happened, that we've asked Jesus into our heart. Now the... Um, what I want you to do is I want you to remember this verse again. Let's go back to this verse for a minute because this is important. Because so if baptism is like the announcement, remember what this verse says? It says, Peter replied, repent and be baptized. So if repent means turning around, following Jesus, then getting baptized, it wouldn't make any sense to make Anna's birth announcement before she was born, would it? Well, it's the same thing. It doesn't really make sense to get baptized until you're actually following Jesus. It's kind of like the next step. So that's the order that it goes in. It's repent, follow Jesus, and then get baptized. Let's look at another verse in Acts. I want you to turn to Acts 18. Acts 18, 8. I think, you know, the other churches that baptize babies is the hope is that if they baptize them when they're a baby, then they'll follow Jesus, which I get. It kind of makes sense. But what we believe in our church is you repent first and then you get baptized. All right, so Acts 18, verse 8. This is what it says. Crispus was a synagogue leader. Crispus. Sounds like crispers, doesn't it? Those crackers. Anyway, his name was Crispus. Crispus was the synagogue leader. He and everyone living in his house came to believe in the Lord. Many others who lived in Corinth heard Paul. They too believed in Jesus and were baptized. So see, there's the order again. They believed and then they were baptized. So to get baptized, the word actually means to get put down in water or immersed in water. And I have some pictures I want to show you of some people getting baptized. You have a look at these. So this first one is Nathan. And Nathan here, he's about to get baptized. Pastor Spencer baptized him. And he's talking um, and telling the people he's making an announcement of why he wants to get baptized. Because he's decided to follow Jesus and now he wants to get baptized. And see in this next picture, he's holding his nose. Because when he goes down into the water, he wants to make sure he doesn't get water up his nose. And here he comes in this last picture, up out of the water. 
Isn't that cool? So that was Nathan getting baptized probably maybe six months or a year ago. So baptism doesn't depend on age. Do you know how like you have to be 16 to get your driver's license or your beginners? Well, baptism, you can be seven, you can be 12, you can be 16, you can be 26, you can be 88. My grandmother got baptized in her 80s because she didn't ask Jesus into her heart until she was an old lady and she wanted to get baptized. Pretty cool, huh? So there's no age, there's not an actual age that you have to get baptized. It's when you feel in your heart that you're ready. So I'm going to ask you some questions in a few minutes and I want to see what your answers are to those questions because that will help you know if you're ready to get baptized. But just before we do that, I want to explain to you one thing about baptism. It's kind of like, if you can think of baptism, almost like a little play and it shows a couple of different things. So the first one is, if you think of when you go down into the water and come up, it's almost like Jesus dying on the cross, getting buried, and then he comes up on Easter Sunday, resurrected, and comes back to life. So getting baptized is kind of like a little play that shows that. It's also like going down in the water, dying to our old sins, and saying, now we're alive in Jesus. So every time you go in the water, it kind of makes you think of different things. Like I said, almost like a little play. And you can also think of it like, especially where it's water, if you go down into the water, it's like getting washed of your sin, the old dirty sin, and coming up brand new in Jesus. So you can think of it that way. And you know what's nice? When you get baptized, most of the time, pretty much almost all the time, the water's nice and warm. So it's kind of like a pool. It's not freezing cold. So baptism is kind of like a play that shows what's happened on the inside of you. We know that sin's not real dirt on you, but it's on our hearts inside. So when we get baptized, it almost shows like the sin going away and us coming up. But we do need to remember that baptism doesn't take our sins away. Jesus does that. Baptism is just the announcement telling everybody what Jesus has done in our hearts, right? That's the most important thing. So the main reason we get baptized is because the Bible tells us. It says, repent, turn around, follow Jesus, and be baptized. So let me ask you a couple questions, and you're going to see a couple words on the screen here. So the first one is, do you believe in Jesus? So B, that's our first letter. Do you believe in Jesus? Because believing comes before baptism. So you got to know whether you believe in Jesus. So you have to think, do I believe in Jesus? Yes or no? So if the answer is yes, we'll go on to the next question. Do you want to obey Jesus? With an O, obey. So we got B-O. So do you want to obey Jesus? And you have to think, yeah, sometimes I have trouble doing it, but deep down I do want to obey Jesus. So if your answer is yes, let's go on to the next question. Have you repented or have you turned around and said no to sin and decided, yep, I want to follow Jesus. So have you repented? So that's our R. And like I said, the way we repent is we just turn and follow Jesus and tell him we're sorry for our sins. And then F, our next one is, do you want to follow Jesus? Do you want to make him your best friend? Because you know what? Even Jesus was baptized. And if we follow him, we want to do what he does. And even he was baptized. And then the last one is T. Do you want to tell other people that you love Jesus? Just like our announcement. Do you want to tell everybody, I love Jesus and I'm not ashamed? Do you know what those letters spell? They spell borfed. Not that you're going to remember that, but it spells borfed. B-O-R-F-T. So it's we have to believe, obey, repent, follow, and tell other people. So if you said yes to all of those questions, then you should think about getting baptized, if you haven't already. Now, as you can see in the picture, Nathan did. So if you decide that you want to get baptized, what I want you to do is tell your parents that you think it's time that you got baptized. And if you can explain to them why you think you got baptized, get them to email me or phone me at the church because next Sunday we're having a baptism service and I would love to see you get baptized because that's awesome. So if you think you're ready, you talk to your parents. One of the ways that you'll know if you're ready is if you keep thinking about it. Like tomorrow, if you think, oh yeah, baptism, I should get baptized. And then the next day you go, oh, I, I think I should get baptized because that's the Holy Spirit often talking to you. If you forget about it and don't think about it again, then chances are maybe you're not quite ready yet. But you know what? That's okay. You'll know when God's speaking to you. So if you aren't ready to get baptized, you go, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to follow him or I don't know if I'm ready to obey. That's okay because life's a journey and maybe you're not there yet and that's perfectly fine. But if you do want to get baptized, make sure you get in touch with me because next Sunday we might have some kids getting baptized. 
One of the questions I want to ask you just before we finish today is, if you're not ready to get baptized, maybe it's because you realized you've never really repented. You've never really turned your life around and followed Jesus because you didn't really know you were supposed to do that. But I can pray with you this morning and we can ask Jesus into your heart so that you can make that decision to turn and follow Jesus. And then when you're ready to get baptized. So if you know that you've done some bad things, but you also know that you're sorry for them and you know that Jesus died on the cross to take care of those sins and to get rid of them forever and you want to follow him, you pray this prayer with me, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me and thank you for loving me. I'm sorry for the bad things I've done and I want you to come into my heart today. I want to follow you and I want to be your best friend forever. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's what repenting is. It's just turning away and saying, Jesus, I want to follow you. I don't want to follow the bad things I've done. So here's your homework, if you really call it homework. If you ask Jesus into your heart for the very first time today and prayed and repented, tell me, because I'd love to know. So email me and let me know. Or number two, if you want to get baptized this coming Sunday, then maybe before Wednesday, get your parents to email me and let me know that as well. And I'll tell you all about it, what to bring, like a towel and stuff like that. And if you think you want to get baptized, but you're a little bit afraid, that's okay. I can help you with that as well. Because you know what? When I got baptized, I was a little tiny bit afraid because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. But I can always explain it to you. If you think you want to get baptized, but you're just not quite sure, we can have a conversation too. Well, you guys, thanks for joining today. I'm really glad that you were here. So next week, we're not going to have Spectrum because we're going to be in the main service where all kinds of people will get baptized. So there won't be any Spectrum online next week. And then the week after that is going to be Easter, which is exciting. So make sure next week you watch our main service so you can see the baptisms because I think you'll enjoy them. All right, let me pray for you before we go. Father, I just thank you for the kids today and I speak a blessing on them. I pray, Lord, for those that you're speaking to about baptism. I just pray that they would, wouldn't be afraid, but they would just hear your voice and want to follow and obey you. So, Lord, I just pray that we're going to see some kids get baptized and that you're going to be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next week.